Before we go any farther, it's important to understand that Windows 8 separates its animations into two different classes. There are independent animations and dependent animations. Independent animations run independently of the thread that's running the core UI logic. Therefore, independent animations will never block the UI thread and the UI will never block the animation. So you'll know you'll get a good experience with an independent animation because it runs in its own thread. On the other hand, dependent animations may run in the same thread as the UI and may be blocked by the UI and of course they may block the UI. UI interaction could slow down or halt the animation. The bulk of the built-in animation features use independent animations. When you create your own, however, you'll have to be careful about this. When you create your own animations, you risk creating a dependent animation, and it depends on the exact property you animate. If you're creating an animation that animates a property that requires the layout to change as you're animating, then it's likely you're creating a dependent animation and you'll have to be aware of that. Independent animations can be offloaded to the graphics processing unit as opposed to taking up time in the central processing unit. And using independent animations allows the animation to run at a smooth and consistent frame rate. To help with this, Windows provides a series of built-in transitions and animations. You could, of course, always recreate these using custom animations, but it's better to use the prepackaged theme animations if possible. It certainly takes less code to implement. You don't have to write any code. It's likely to be more performant because it's an independent animation and you don't have to write the code. And it's also more consistent with the standard user interface. But of course, you can always do more with your own custom animations. We'll start by looking at built-in theme transitions. Windows 8 provides a set of theme transitions that are typically used to animate visuals as they're loading or unloading or changing location. You can trigger these changes by adding an element or control to a page, by removing an element or control from a page, or by modifying the control properties so that their location or size changes. Although there are more transitions than these, we'll focus on these five transitions. There's the Add Delete theme transition, which provides animated transition behavior for when controls add or delete children or content. There's the Content theme transition, and this provides a transition behavior for when the content of a control is changing. You might want to animate a control as it changes its content. There's the entrance theme transition, which is used, as far as I can tell, most often, which provides the animated transition behavior for when controls first appear. The reorder theme transition provides transition behavior for when list controls change their order. So when things move around in a list, they don't just pop into place, they animate gracefully into place. And there's the reposition theme transition, which provides the transition behavior for when controls change position, so they don't just plop into place, they gracefully glide into place. To use these transitions, you add an element.child transitions element. And then within that, you create a transition collection element and place your transition information inside of that. This can apply to any element, and you add one or more transitions within that transition collection element you'll end up with code that looks like this. For example, for a grid, if you want the children of the grid to slide into place, you'll set the grid.children transitions element property, and then within that create a transition collection. Inside the transition collection, you'll create one or more transition elements which define the behavior. In this case, we're using the entrance theme transition. Let's look at markup and examples that demonstrate each of the five transitions we've discussed. I've loaded our sample project named simply Animation, and I'd like to demonstrate the entrance theme transition, but to do that, I have to load the page. So I've moved to a different page, and now I'll move back to this page and watch carefully the grid in the upper left-hand corner. You ready? 
Here goes. As the rectangles load into the first grid you see there, they slide neatly into place. Let me do that again. Come back here, load it up, and there they go. Now it's important to note that they slide into place in the order that they're defined in the markup. Let's look at the markup, which looks like this. And here you can see that grid. And the only thing special about it is it has its child transitions property set here. And within the children is that it has its children transitions property set here. And within the children transitions property, there's a transition collection property. And within there, just a single transition, the entrance theme transition. Then if you look down at the markup for the grid itself, it just contains a bunch of rectangles. Now I have defined a style for the rectangle class, which makes it be 50 by 50 and have a fill of red. That's another story altogether. But here you can see we have the nine rectangles and they're defined row zero, column zero, row one, column zero, row two, column zero. So they go bing, 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 bing. And that's the order in which they appear in the transition. Let's watch it again here. There they go in the order they're defined. For our next example, we're going to use the add delete theme transition. Here I'm going to add rectangles programmatically. I'm going to add rectangles given a random color. And as each one comes into place, you can see it sort of glows into place. It doesn't just appear, it sort of glows. There we are, it fades in. If I remove a rectangle, you can see that they rearrange themselves. And this uses the same transition as the remove item theme transition. We'll come back to that in a minute. But let's look at how the add delete theme transition does its work. We'll need to go back to our sample here. And here's the example. And our code, we have a stack panel with a couple buttons. There are the buttons. And within there, an items control. And you may not have run across an items control yet, but it's a container for items, other items, in a non-linear fashion. And we can have within there an items panel template, which defines what should be inside the items control. And it's a wrap grid. And a wrap grid is a grid which rewraps its content depending on what you put in it. And this has a height of 200. You'll also notice that the items control has an item container transitions property. That's the one for the items control that contains the transition collection. And within the transition collection, again, you add whatever transitions you want. We only want one in this case, the add delete theme transition. And that's the only code there is that defines the transition behavior of this wrap grid. Now, we have code that's going to add rectangles into this wrap grid. As a matter of fact, that's as far as we have. There's no more markup for this demonstration. But if we look at the sample code that runs when we click buttons, we'll see here code that adds a button and removes a button. Rectangle items is that items control. Here we'll create a new rectangle get a random color for it, get random color is defined down here. You can examine that if you like, it just gets a random color. We set the width and the height and the margin, and we then add that rectangle to the items in that items control. So that all that does is add a new button. To remove a button, we say if the items count is greater than zero, then remove the item at position zero in the upper left-hand corner. So, all we've got here is an items control with an add delete theme transition. And by adding and removing things, we're taking advantage then of the add delete theme transition to make things look nice. In the next example, we're using the content theme transition. And this transition runs whenever you change the content. In this case, clicking on this rectangle changes its color to a random color. And here you can see it slides gracefully into place, sort of indicating that it's changed its content. Let's go look at the example here. The content theme animation is a content control. A content control is just a control that contains other stuff. 
And you can see a content control has a content transitions child element where you put the transition collection. In the transition collection, we have our transition element, the content theme transition. Within our content control, we have basically a rectangle, and that's all. So within the rectangle, nothing's happening at all, but we do have hooked up to the content control, the pointer pressed event handler. And if I go look at that event handler, you'll see here we create a new rectangle of a random color and set the content of the content host control to be that new rectangle. So we throw away the old rectangle and replace it with a new rectangle. And by doing it, the content has changed and the animation kicks in. If we go back and look at that animation. It is the content theme transition and the content theme transition is just sliding it in gracefully from the right hand side. There are other properties you can set of that element. You might investigate them in the documentation, but for now, that's all we're doing. For our next example, we have the reorder theme transition. I have the whole thing here in a scroll viewer panel. If we add an item to this collection, you'll see that things rearrange neatly as we add them. We're adding an item in this position right here. How nicely things rearrange for us. And how is that happening? Let's go back to our demonstration. Again, we're using an items control that contains a wrap grid. And the wrap grid contains children transitions element. And the transitions element contains a transition collection, which has a reorder theme transition. We have a red, a green, and a blue rectangle by default in this wrap grid. And then by clicking the button, we run the code in add item button click. Let's go look at that code. And this code merely creates a new rectangle, sets its width and height, and adds it into the items list at position two. So we insert our rectangle at position two, which causes things to reorder, and the reorder transition theme takes care of reordering things for us. Finally, we have the reposition theme transition. Here we're going to remove a rectangle, and you've seen this transition used in the add remove theme transition. As things get repositioned, they move around animatedly within there. And in this case, all our code is doing is removing a single rectangle from this collection. If we look at the code here, we again have an items control, which uses the reorder theme transition in its wrap grids, children transitions element. I'm not sure that's the right one. Let's ensure that's the right one. Nope, that was not the right one. Here we go. We have our stack. That was the one we already looked at. Here's our stack panel. It's got a remove button with code, and you can see in the code, it's just saying, if we have more than zero items, let's remove the one in the upper left-hand corner. And then down here, we set up within our items control, we have an item container transitions. You've already seen that child element with the transition collection, and we set up the reposition theme transition. That's all that's necessary to get that animation as we remove things and reposition them within the items control, which contains a wrap grid.